When I, when I sat with Bertie, God began to speak to me about grace. And something that's been dear on my heart is just that you and I have been called to a heart of worship. But I believe that unless we understand what grace is all about, worship does not take its true meaning in our lives. But I'm not here to preach about grace today. I'm here to tell you that you are a worshiper of the Most High God. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus has done so much for you. He's made it possible for you and I this day, today, to stand in His presence, blameless and pure, so that we can worship Him in spirit and in truth. How awesome is that? His life in you, causing you, to be the Christ that He wants you to be. I go around and I tell a lot of people, you know, when I sit in a place like this, I see a whole lot of Jesus in this place this morning. I know I've shared this with, and some of you have heard this already this week, but I feel like just telling you again for those of you who didn't hear. About two weeks ago, I had a vision while we were ministering <clears throat> where God just showed me that He'd clothed His people with garments of praise, garments of righteousness, garments of honor. That uh, just blew my mind away. Gave us the right to stand before Him pure. Mm. And so I just saw these vessels just walking around, doing their daily business, but just honoring Him. People who understood who they were in Jesus Christ. Living their daily lives in honor of Him. And the purity of God's Word just manifesting in their hearts. And even their daily activities honored Him. The very things that they did and said honored Him. And I looked upon the people of the Lord and I just saw these lights of honor just going up to heaven. The glory that is Jesus just touching the heart of God. Friend, it's time that you begin to see yourself as God sees you. We're not just flesh and blood. In fact, in in Jesus, we are more than that. Vessels of honor. I love that. Vessels of righteousness goodness that Jesus is right inside you, hallelujah, and and manifests wherever you go. Do you catch this picture? We're no longer just you are a man and a woman of great value in the kingdom of God. You have been crowned with, oh, I mean just, you have been mm, loved on. Filled with His goodness. Filled with His very life. I see the tears running down some of your faces because you're understanding today who you are in Jesus Christ. So if you were just, let me indulge, indulge me a minute. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 verse 22. says this, this includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, listen to this, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Oof. Jesus dies on the cross of Calvary. Takes the sin of man upon himself. And turns around and declares you free today. Blameless and pure 
Now you can understand what I'm talking about when I said the vessels of honor. Vessels blameless and pure. When you see yourself like this, then the contaminants of this earth just begin to fall by the wayside. The very things that would try to distract you fall by the wayside. Grow strangely dim in the sight of His glory and grace because the fire of God is burning in your hearts. This is a time, church, that we see ourselves blameless and pure. I'm so honored. I'm so grateful that Jesus died on the cross for me. I don't even know what that means. I don't know what he went through. I don't know what he, what, what I can only imagine. We've seen the movies and and we've heard, but I can only imagine what it must have been like. But that he would choose to cleanse me and purify my heart and make me his residence, his dwelling place. I don't know about you, friend. That causes me to humble myself and to bow in his presence and live my life in honor of what he accomplished in me. There's no other reason that I desire to live but to please him. I have no other desire anymore. There was a time that I thought I had to grow the ministry and I had to do this and I had to do that, this trick, that doing. I watched other men and I saw what they did. I thought I had to do all that stuff. But I've come to realize that nothing, none of that stuff is important or of value to the kingdom of God. None of the works of man, none of the plans, none of, our, none of our plans, none of our ideas, nothing that we could conjure up is of any value to the kingdom of God. Because you see, I can't add something to something that's already finished. If Jesus said it is finished, there's nothing more that I could do to add anything to that. It's done. So now all I have to do is not try to build anything because I can't build anything because it's already finished. The building's already complete, so there's nothing to build. <laughs> By the way, that just came, that was revelation to me right now. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Hey, yes, I'll buy the CD. There's nothing more. So why are we still striving to accomplish or attain something that is not ours to accomplish or attain? Why are we trying to be something more than we already are? I know that you've sat and listened to messages Sunday after Sunday, and some of you are probably better preachers than the people standing in front of you by now. But I want to say this to you, that as you begin to see yourself as Jesus sees you, then nothing will hinder you from walking in the completeness, the fullness that is Christ. So when we prophesy and say that God's plan for this city is already in place, we, we are speaking in the completeness. It's done. There's nothing more that we have to do to see to it that the glory of God is established here because it's already done. But all we have to do is walk in it. We have to live it. And how do I do that? Vessels of honor. 